about tests as a product. A test is like a quiz or an exam um, to find out what exactly someone knows. A test usually has measurable objectives, behaviors. We are trying to see if they can match a particular standard, hit a particular criteria. Um, so think of test as the, the product. Think of assessment, however, as the procedure, the process. Assessment is what happens during and after giving instructions for a test. Now, it might seem like I'm picking on words here. Process, product, what do you mean? I think it's an important distinction because when we talk about assessment, we're talking about that process that a teacher uses to document what students know, what kind of skills they have. And the purpose of this assessment is to help them make further improvements. Assessments are not usually there to judge the student. It is there to consider how we can help students make improvements or even we can consider how we can make improvements to our teaching content. So an ass assessment is a process to help us to adjust what we're doing in the classroom, adjust our teaching, and to help us help the students learn better. And like Manjul says, a product is final. So there's something kind of final about a test. And yes, absolutely, like what Raphael said earlier, a test is a kind of assessment. You can assess a student using a test, but you can assess a student using other methods that are not tests. So I think assessment is, is much bigger, is a process that is much bigger than testing. So like we said, can we assess without tests? We certainly can. There are ways of assessing a student and finding out how, how much they know, what they know, without giving out a test in the classroom or getting them to fill in an online test, for example. And I'm glad you all agree. So what is the purpose of assessment? Now notice today's webinar is about assessment and not particularly about tests. There will be talk of tests during the webinar, but our focus here today is about assessing where students are after a long period of um, disruptions to the classes. So one purpose of assessment, um, a lot of students, uh, a lot of schools and institutions use assessment to place students in the right class. Is the student in the intermediate class, pre-intermediate class, advanced class, or for promotion reasons? Okay, the student's been in pre-intermediate for a year now. Is that student ready to move on to intermediate? Let's give them a test or let's, let's assess them in some way or other in order to see if they're ready to be promoted to a different class. I really like that, Andrea. Um, I've got that coming right up, so you've read my mind. Some students really enjoy taking tests. I know I have some students who really enjoy taking achievement tests like the Cambridge FCE's main suite exams, you know, the first certificate, like the IELTS exam, like the TOEFL exams. They do it so that they can feel like they've achieved the next stage. Oh, so I've passed my first certificate. I'm gonna try for the advanced certificate now. And when I get that certificate, I will feel like I've achieved something and some students and teachers use exams like these achievement ex achievement exams to um, mark these milestones in their learning process. And I'm sure you have students who feel that way or perhaps even parents of students um, who feel that way about achievement tests. You're not quite intermediate until you have a certificate to show for it. <laughs> not really, but some people think that way, don't they? Another purpose of assessment is to help teachers plan courses and to diagnose where students are. Now, I suppose this is the most important purpose of assessment for us today, especially for many of you who are going or preparing to go into face-to-face -face teaching again, uh, resuming classes after a long break, or 
perhaps you've been teaching online because of the lockdown, because of the virus, and now you're slowly moving into face-to-face -face teaching, but you're not quite sure where students are over this online teaching period. And when you start your new course, when you start your new term, you really want to have a feel for where they all are. Have they regressed? Have they improved? Have they stagnated? You want to diagnose where students are and their level and their skills and what they're able to do and not able to do. So this is one of the main purposes of us teachers assessing students at the start of a course. And then as a result of this diagnosis, we then can help plan our course better to suit uh, what students lack, what students need during this course. Another purpose of assessment is to show evidence of learning and progress, and that's why we have progress tests. Sometimes when you use certain course books at the end of a unit or a chapter, you might have a progress test, or every at the end of every three units, you might have a progress test um, to help review what they've learned, but also to see if they've really learned what they're meant to learn, because we all know Hello. teaching does not equal learning. Oh. So we want to see what they've really learned and not what we've taught them um, and to see this evidence of how much they've learned and how much they are able to apply this knowledge to practice. And so assessments can help show us if they've really learned what we think they should be learning. Now, obviously, assessment and testing very often, I feel, is teacher centered. The teacher sets the tests, the teacher tells the students when the test is going to be, and then the students very nervously do the test. And then the teacher grades them and gives a mark. And it kind of makes the teacher kind of very powerful. This all powerful teacher who was able to tell the students, you failed. However, assessments are not just about reigning over students. Assessments are also about teachers learning about how effective their teaching has been. Hello. If you do a progress test and you realize Hello. that your students haven't learned any of the things you've taught them, perhaps it's time to reflect mm. on your own teaching. Perhaps it's time to reflect on what you've been doing and why it isn't working, not just with one student, not just with two students, but with the entire class. Why isn't it working? Why are they not learning? And exactly like Anna says, it can then inform our next step, next step in, in the classroom. And of course, importantly, assessment helps learners develop. It gives learners feedback on how they're doing. As a learner, I want to know, and that's probably why learners want certificates, because they want to know where they are in this learning process. Okay, we do say learning, especially language learning, is not it's not linear, it's not chronological. You can't say, you know, okay, you've learned the present perfect, you've mastered it now, let's now move on to the present perfect continuous. Unfortunately, the brain doesn't work that way. But learners need to know, where am I exactly? What do I need to improve on? What are my strengths and weaknesses? And assessments help them to understand what they need to be working on. But also assessments gives learners a chance to pat themselves on the shoulder and say, hey, I've done well there. I've come really far since I started learning this language back in January last year, for example. So some of you spoke about formative and summative assessments earlier. Let's test your knowledge. Let's assess your knowledge of the words formative and summative. Which of these are formative and which of these, which of these are summative? And here's the trick question. Which of these can be both? In the chat field, feel free to type your answers. Which of these are formative? assessments which of these are summative assessments and here's the trick which of these can be both yogesh 
thank you for that. Um, that's absolutely